Hi, I'm Lou, and welcome to my YouTube. I'm still in Wales, and today I'm on a mini adventure to one of my favourite climbs. Not the Hollywood sign, obviously, because I'm in Wales, but it's called The Book. Just leaving my parents' village. Along the lanes to the main road. The main road's my least favourite part. I'm hoping for no close passes. The roads aren't very wide. This one particularly, pretty narrow it's not really even wide enough for one car in parts let alone two cars or two cars and a bike so I tend to be ready to jump into a bush if needed <laughs> I'll be riding for about three hours you can do the loop quicker but I like going a slight detour to go up the book the way we did it when we Everest did it I'll explain Everesting in a bit if you don't know what it is but for now I need to carry on along the lane get onto that main road. I'm through most of the busy roads now, I'm going through towns and villages in the valleys. At some point last year Wales introduced a 20 mile an hour speed limit in most towns and villages so it feels pretty safe in most of those, cars aren't going too crazy. A couple of close passes on the narrow lanes which are 60 miles an hour and that's frankly terrifying, I'm not overreacting. Imagine if you're on the platform at a train station near the edge and a train whizzes by. It's terrifying. I had a stupid discussion with someone about it once and they were like, well, cyclists close past us, motorists, when we're in traffic. And it's like, it's a bit of a difference. I feel quite comfortable on a platform walking up against a train that's stationary. But when it's moving, it's very different. I've got another analogy to tell you when I'm on the mountain, I'm getting closer and closer. I've got a couple more towns and hills to go through before I get there. Heading up, up there. Actually, I've got to go up there first. There we are on the climb. Don't know if you can see it on my Wahoo. It says the segment at the top, Internationales, Book, Everesting, something like that. So the quickest time I've ever done it is 24 minutes. Normal time is about half an hour. How on the day we Everested I did my quickest time, I've no idea. I was quite fit. <laughs> so, I'm gonna tell you two stories while I'm on this climb. First one is about Everesting, and the second one is about the grape and the watermelon. But first, Everesting. I can talk to you now, I'm past the cattle grid. I hate that bit. <laughs> so, Everesting on a bike is when you do a ride one ride and you cover the equivalent height of Everest which is 8,842 meters or about 29,000 foot in one ride on one hill going up down up down up down until you get to the height of Everest this is the hill we did it on the book in Wales we had to do it 27 times I don't know how we did it <laughs> The book is Wales's answer to Mont Ventoux, I think. You can go up it three different ways, from Abergwynfi, which is where I've just come through, from Triorchy or from Nanty Moyle. But from Abergwynfi, this way, it's my favourite because of the views. And it never gets too steep, it's just gradual drag. So it's just a, a feat of endurance, really. But miraculously, the day we did it, we had a tailwind. I've never had a tailwind on this climb before. There's not much wind today, but sure enough, it's a slight headwind. Now, I think we'd have really struggled with the Everesting without that sweet tailwind that we had, but also we wouldn't have managed it at all without our Sherpas. Rob was in a car at the top, just up there. Lucy's husband, Mo, had the camper van at the bottom. We had Jess's husband, George, in his truck up and down and my parents all supporting us my brother rocked up it was just amazing the support was great and kept us going today i just have to do it once goodness me anyway that view now the other story i want to tell you is about the grape and the watermelon the grape is the cyclist and the watermelon is the motorist, if you will. Now, 
grapes and watermelons can be friends. They can coexist quite happily. The problem is when they bounce off each other because it doesn't work the same both ways. A grape can bounce off a watermelon, might be a little bit bruised, but not really. But what happens if a watermelon bounces off a grape? The grape is destroyed. So that's the difference between cyclists and motorists. One is very much more vulnerable than the other. So please bear that in mind when you're close passing or wondering why cyclists are feel safe enough to close pass a car while it's parked. <laughs> now I'm almost at the top lay-by coming up here is the one where Rob was parked where we had to turn on each lap. I'm continuing over the ridge because I'm going to drop down the other side of the book today. I don't have anything else I'm sorry I'll bring more snacks next time. Bye bye. <laughs> I had to get out of there. Blink and egg, the sheep scared me. I don't know if they'd bite me or what, but there's no way I was going to sit there and eat my snack. <laughs> so now I'm descending the other side down into Nanty Moyle and back along through the valleys to my parents' house. Beautiful. finished descending, I was coming through a village, there's a bloke sat in his front garden, kind of staring. As I got level with him, he said, duh, your bike is fabulous. <laughs> so of course I said, thank you very much. People here are so friendly, so nice. All the people we encountered the other day walking with Lindsay were so nice and kind. And in the pub that night, the local darts team had a whip around raised over a hundred quid for her. It's wild. I love whales, especially when the sun is shining. So, I'm gonna finish my ride, head back to my parents, hang out with them for the day, and then head back to England. What an amazing time the last couple of days in Wales. Wales, thank you. Deal. That's it for now. I will see you in my next video. I've got a couple of videos I haven't edited from Florida yet, so I need to get off my butt and do that, apologies. But for now, thank you for watching. Thank you for the likes. If you don't subscribe, please do. Please don't be a scary watermelon bouncing off grapes. And I will see you soon. Bye. Me again. It was two miles from my parents' house and I punctured and it didn't reseal before the tire went down completely. So I got gas with me, thankfully. Pumped it back up again and I'm on the move. But I just remembered another story I wanted to tell you. So all around these lanes, hills and towns is where Geraint Thomas and Luke Rowe used to, probably still do at times if they're not in somewhere like Girona, where they used to train. All those Welsh guys on Ineos. Now, back when I started cycling, they were on Team Sky and I had a Team Sky jersey which was the first cycling jersey I bought and I loved it. I was wearing it in a local bike shop and cafe near here and a bloke in the cafe said to me, unless you're Team Sky, you can't wear Team Sky kit. Does Team Sky come in here and you'll look like a knob wearing it? So I never wore it again. And I've always been a bit funny about Team Kit, but I shouldn't be because it's supporting the team and people wear football jerseys all the time. What do you think about Team Kit? Anyway, my puncture is not holding, so I need to <laughs> roll back to my parents' house and hope that I'm not wrecking my back wheel. Yeah, I've got a major puncture. <laughs> Made it back just in time. I don't know if you can hear the rain hammering down. <laughs> really going now. Bye.